shouting, insult, abuse, violence, rape, pain, tears, fear, shame, stolen childhood. Globally, one in three women and girls will experience physical or sexual violence during their lifetime. That is more than 800 million women worldwide. For many of them, the threat looms largest where they should be safest, in their own homes. In Sub-Saharan Africa, 64% of women have experienced intimate partner violence at least once in their lifetime. 38% of all women murders are committed by intimate partners. Sexual and gender-based violence, or SGBV, is any act that is perpetrated against a person's will and is based on gender norms and unequal power relationships. It can result in physical, emotional, psychological, or sexual harm. Although women and girls are overwhelmingly affected by SGBV, men and boys can also be at risk. No matter your age or background, anyone can experience SGBV. SGBV is an issue faced by communities in all contexts. However, it is demonstrated that during armed conflicts, disasters, and other emergencies, such as pandemics, risks of SGBV are exacerbated. Intimate partner violence, child marriage, sexual abuse against girls and boys, trafficking, and sexual exploitation are on the rise. SGBV is often life-threatening and impacts a survivor's safety, well-being, dignity, rights, livelihoods, health, and many other aspects, both in the short and the long term. The stigma and shame, as well as fear of retribution, often prevent survivors from coming forward. Therefore, SGBV often remains invisible. In situations of disasters and other emergencies, we should always assume and believe that SGBV is happening. There is no need to wait for evidence or data. Most acts of SGBV are perpetrated by someone known to the survivor. This can include people in authority, including humanitarian workers. Sexual exploitation and abuse is a form of sexual and gender-based violence that constitutes an abuse of power by aid workers against the affected population. The abuse is based on gender inequality, power imbalance, and disrespect of human rights. The Red Cross and Red Crescent movement protects vulnerable people from sexual exploitation and abuse by its staff and volunteers. We have a zero-tolerance policy on sexual exploitation and abuse of affected populations as this is gross misconduct. As the world's largest humanitarian network, the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies is committed to address SGBV. In 2015, our movement adopted a resolution titled Sexual and Gender-Based Violence – Joint Action on Prevention and Response. This resolution clearly states our role and responsibilities as a movement to address sexual and gender-based violence in armed conflict, disasters, and other emergencies. Through our national societies and around 12 million volunteers, our movement benefits from community-based expertise and has a unique reach and access to work on SGBV, including during humanitarian crises. The International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies supports national societies in the long term by building their capacities to prevent and respond to SGBV. We support authorities to build back better national and regional systems to address SGBV in situations of disaster and other emergencies. SGBV is everyone's problem and we all have a responsibility and role to play in addressing this issue in the course of our work, regardless of what sector we are working in. Here is what you can do to help address SGBV during emergencies and disasters. 1. All our frontline staff and volunteers have a responsibility to apply the Do No Harm principle. 2. Staff and volunteers should get trained on SGBV and protection against sexual exploitation and abuse core concepts and be aware of the most up-to-date available local SGBV referral pathways. 
3. Raise awareness among the communities about harmful effects of violence as well as healthy coping mechanisms to deal with stress, fear, grief and trauma. Promote gender equality and available services to survivors. 4. Ensure that survivors are aware and have access to safe and appropriate survivor-centered SGBV services, including medical, psychosocial, legal, and shelter services. 5. Mainstream SGBV prevention and response measures into our preparedness and emergency response activities and programs from all sectors, including disaster risk reduction, WASH, shelter, livelihoods, health, and migration including in our planning and budget processes. Make sure they are safe and do not put individuals at risk of SGBV. 6. Ensure coordination of efforts and services to respond to SGBV with existing local coordination mechanisms or working groups. 7. Independently of national legislation, no sexual relationships are allowed between humanitarian workers and affected people nor may humanitarian workers purchase or exchange goods or favors for sexual services. These principles are part of the movement's adopted codes of conduct and protection from sexual exploitation and abuse policies. By taking our responsibilities to address SGBV, we can help stop this unacceptable form of violence. Working on SGBV can be emotionally overwhelming. Some staff and volunteers may have been exposed to SGBV themselves. It is therefore important to practice self-care and reach out to a trusted person if you need support. IFRC. Saving lives. Changing minds.